welcome to Dota 101. Hey everybody, I want to welcome you guys to the mid-episode in Season 2, the first episode of Season 2 of Dota 101, and I wanted all of you to know that I listened to the Reddit posts that were made about the length and just certain things about me that that were said and I want you guys to know that these videos will be shorter. I will try to shed a lot of time on in or in the next set of videos. I also want as much feedback as possible because I'm altering some of the show structure, which I'll get to in a little bit. But I wanted to first respond to the Reddit posts. Some of the Reddit posts were about not only the length, but the length was a big issue, but also I was an issue in terms of um, certain people didn't like my demeanor on the show, the amount of time I spoke on the show, just little subtle things that I did with like my hands, you know, like these hand gestures and stuff that really kind of upset people or just, it wasn't very favorable to a large portion of the community. And I wanted to respond to that firsthand because I felt like when reading those responses, those same people were then the reflection of myself became the reflection of Dota 101. And I kind of wanted to emphasize on this fact because in reality, I want everybody to understand that I didn't, I don't make Dota 101 for me. And Dota 101 isn't my platform into something bigger and better. What Dota 101 really started was when I started coaching my real life friends and I started to see that their improvements were happening at such a faster rate than my improvements happened. And really all it took was just me taking the time out to teach and to, and, to, and to talk them through things and to explain why things worked and why things were more effective and to show them how to properly do things. I started realizing that at, at month, you know, two and three, they were already as good as it took me naturally like a whole year to improve. And I was just like dumbfounded by that. So then, you know, as it was suggested um, in the first, in the first episode of Dota 101, I then um, listen to somebody's advice and I started making these videos and you know it became a relative hit I mean I'm by I'm, I by no means am like or I don't have the best guide out there nor do I have like the most viewers or subscribers or anything but for the most part a lot of people that have actually watched it really enjoyed it and that was good the people that disliked me then took their opinion of me and basically just wrote off dota 101 and these are the people i want to attract and these are the people i want to talk to because at this point in some of the other videos some of you were already like man f this guy you know this dude's annoying or whatever and all that stuff and if you are now watching this and you're feeling the same way understand that breaking th uh fighting through that and 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 putting up with my nonsense or whatever you feel of me will work out in the end especially if you need the help because the only thing that you're doing is you're investing or you're being patient enough to right, sift through all the bullshit in order to actually take out the things that are really valuable. And the things that are really valuable in, in terms of Dota 101 are, is just the content. And that's what I want to be in the forefront. I'm not, I don't make these videos to be the next day nine. I don't make these videos to be like some popular esports figure. I make these videos because... If any of you have played matchmaking, and we're going to get into this discussion as well. Actually, I'll do it right now. Part of the reason why Dota 101, the format, is changing is because some of my friends have quit the game. Some of the people that you saw previously have already stopped playing because of the frustrations with matchmaking and certain members of the community in terms of, like, the players that will pick all five carries or will pick supports and just, you know, get Midas or just... Uh, I can go on and on and on and on and on. The point is, some of my friends have quit this game. Some of the people I was beginning to teach quit this game because of the fact that the community and matchmaking system is so frustrating because everybody has their own ego and people's egos far outweigh the team value. Wins are irrelevant. What matters is people's um, satisfaction with what they're doing at the time. And that kind of was part of the reason why I started Dota 101. I was like, you know, if I can help other players play like my friends, my friends don't do that. My friends aren't going to last pick, you know, what they want to play. My friends, if they're the last pick, they'll automatically pick team need or they'll pick roles that they're good at when they're playing matchmaking and when they're in in houses or um, in bot games, they'll practice the roles that they're deficient in, right? Like this is, this is how they learned how to play. This is how they were taught how to play. And they also don't let their egos get in the way. And then 
they don't understand. They can't relate to the players that don't. And I, 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 I'm not the type to, I'm not going to deter them from doing what they want to do. They stopped playing the game. They were frustrated with the game. And that's okay. I mean, it, they are well within their right to do what they want to do. It is a little bit frustrating for me. It's a little bit sad, of course, knowing that some of your real-life friends are not are no longer going to take um, part in something that you do, right? Like something that I do very often. But, again, I mean, these are the things that we have to adjust to. And the truth is, this is why Dota 101, this is why I hope... Um, it becomes successful because at the end of the day, what I want is for people to not only become better, I want to hope improve the community as a whole. My, my main goal with this is really so that, or is my main goal is one day, I want the next generation of professional players to have started with Dota 101. I would love it for one of you watching, make it to the level that I haven't made it, or that, make it in a in a profession right like uh in the profession of esports go to a level that i wasn't able to take my game to apparently right so that's that's my goal i want you guys the future pro scene whomever you are to have a a better opportunity in order to make a professional team down the road and it i, I mean that's that's my thing i would love it for the next generation of pros, some of them to come from Dota 101. Like Dota 101 is what is what helped them get to a higher level, and then they met these group of, good group of guys. They made a five man team, and using what they learned, and then adding all of their experience and then their style and all that stuff, and boom, and then they made it as pros. That to me would be the ultimate goal. Like that to me would be an honor. Like that would be really cool because that's what I want. I'm not trying to change the community. I'm not even trying to fix the problem because the truth is. It's the human condition that's the issue is everybody wants to talk about being better and getting better and improving and doing the things that it takes to improve, taking the time out to study replays, learn your craft, do the hard work. Instead, they end up doing the total opposite, right? They'll throw games, they'll quit games because they're getting frustrated or they don't want to play this hero. So they're, they're not going to pick them. And then they pick something that the team doesn't need. And it inherently fucks up roles and, and, and lanes and all this stuff. And to be honest, I kind of quit trying to convince people that they should do things differently at this point. I just want to help the people that want to get better and want to improve and want to learn. And those of you, I hope, will then take your skills, meet up with a good group of guys that you're playing on matchmaking or your real life friends or whomever, and then start playing in scrimmages and start playing those same trolls and then whoop their ass and then go forward and hopefully have a, pot or have a, have a chance to potentially become pros yourselves. That is the goal. The goal of Dota 101 is not to improve my stock in the esports community or any of that bullshit because the truth is I don't mind that some of you guys dislike me or dislike my habits or whatever. The, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making this to make a bunch of friends. What I'm doing is I'm doing something I wish would have been done for me. And this is not a slight at any of the guys that I mentioned in the first episode. Some of my mentors, right? You know, Chase, what's up, Jay? Um, Dave grunt these players really 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 did help me and were very influential but none of them took the time out to do what i'm doing or what i did with my real life friends and what i'm doing here they just we didn't have these cram sessions we didn't have these discussions i learned by watching and i learned by asking questions after games before games but i really learned most of my lessons in games while they're costing them games or doing dumb shit getting yelled at getting corrected you know all that stuff all the things that come with learning and progressing and improving so i wanted to make that very clear i wanted everybody to be on the same page here dota 101 is not to highlight my ability or not to highlight uh my game iq or any of that bullshit Dota 101 is strictly for the up-and-coming players, and I'm hoping that when the game finally gets released, those new f players that get flooded into the system, they start learning Dota 101. They start watching Dota 1. They start improving their gameplay. Because at the end of the day, if you really give a shit about Dota, and if you're passionate about the game, you don't want individual success. Individual success isn't going to improve esports. What's going to improve esports is a group effort it's the collective issue um the more competitive dota becomes because of the skill level if the skill level at the bottom is raised 
Could you imagine that the average player skill is at my level? That is only going to benefit the pro scene. There will be better storylines, better games. You'll have better, um, you'll have more attractions for sponsors. I mean, think about it. At the end of the day, you are only as strong right as your weakest link. And I'll imagine if the up and, up and coming players in a few months get to what it took me years to, to get to. That is only going to improve the competitive scene because there are going to be more players, there are going to be more competitive games. Um, and, and really, if, if you want Dota to break through mainstream like poker did, remember, poker wasn't really considered an eSport until it got on ESPN. If you want Dota to have that type of level of success, well, at some point, um, all this trolling and all this, this stupid shit that goes on in matchmaking really should stop. I understand people want to do what they want to do and do how they want to do it and that's all well and good but if if your mindset is improving at, at a game because your goal is to become a pro your goal is to become better your goal is to play in really highly competitive games well then you can't do any of that and i think that's something that i wanted to highlight especially with this introduction is to tell you that not only are things changing in dota one because i listen to the community i also want the community to that doesn't like me to know that even if you don't like me, it's okay. You can have whatever issue you have with me. I understand. I'm not, I've never asked for subscriptions. I don't ask for you guys to go on guides or the Steam guides and like give me a positive rating and all that stuff. All I ask is that you judge the content of Dota 101 appropriately. Not, not, not the host, not anything. You judge the content appropriately. There's a reason why I have other co professional players coaching. Is because I'm deficient in certain areas, and I'm aware of this. And if I'm deficient in certain areas, I am not going to jeopardize the respectability and the validity, right, of Dota 101 by trying to just bullshit through a coaching session. No, I get pro players to to help me out, and because the truth is, I'm not a pro, and though I'm friends with them, and I've been a stand-in, and I, I play against them pretty much all the time or play with them. I mean, it doesn't really matter. The point is I'm nobody and I've done nothing. So I'm always going to have to concede whatever opinion I have about anything to the people that actually do it for a living. And that ultimately is where I wanted to get to in this conversation. Dota 101 is not to highlight me at all. I have other coaches coming in, and you'll see more and more and more coaches. As a matter of fact, Wagamama will be the next coach in this season. He will be coaching the carry, which is two episodes from now. The next episode will be the five, and then we're going to go to the one. I do that not to highlight me. I do that because, again, I want to improve the overall skill of all the viewers that watch this. This has entirely nothing to do with me. So whatever your opinions are about me, you can keep them. I'm not going to try to discourage them at all, what, whether it's positive or negative. But I want you to understand that I want Dota 101 to be judged by the content on it. And at the same time, I will listen to the community that makes suggestions like, bro, you fucking you talk too much, you're annoying, you're this, you're that. Um, cut down the time of Dota 101. Absolutely. I'm going to try to do all of those things for you guys. However, what I, all that I ask in return from you is to watch these fucking videos so that when people play this game, they don't get frustrated with the game. They don't quit the game because they're tired of people doing dumb shit and they're tired of people acting a fool. There is absolutely no reason why we have a game this good and yet people have to quit because of the other players playing and how you can't get a good game when you match make. And unless you have five, the game isn't fun. That to me is mind boggling to me. Yet, it's also not, I mean, I also understand. I understand how frustrating it is, and I will show you what I mean. I played two games, which you'll see before we get started in part one, so that I can highlight just how bad sometimes the matchmaking system is and how bad um, other players are in terms of their, of their want to to win or their want to to succeed. Winning is a backdrop in Dota, when in reality, you play a five-on-five -five game. If you wanna if if you wanna screw around, play a solo game, play StarCraft. Like do something else. Like but to waste the time of four other players, I think that is totally selfish and totally not cool. And I wanted to highlight all of that stuff. So at the end of this, 
I'm going to leave you guys just with one more thing. And that is, in this episode, we are going to discuss certain things that people kept asking me questions about in terms of, in part one, they, they didn't fully understand what I meant by e uh, lane equilibrium in terms of the creep. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to emphasize that again. I'm also going to get a little bit more in detail with some stuff that I, that I wanted to get to. As well as, I'm going to show you guys Fistful of Tangos. It happened this weekend from, uh, it was a Beyond the Summit tournament. It was a one-on-one -on -one tournament, and it also and it emphasized, and it was a mid tournament, right? So like it was a one on one middle, and it emphasized some of the things that I, that I wanted to show and discuss. I also just was really impressed with the level of play. And though this is the intermediate level, and that's a pro game, there are so many things that I discussed in the in, in the beginner level, and that I'm going to emphasize in the intermediate level that you will definitely see here, even at the pro level. So I definitely wanted to get to that. That is that was an incredible tournament, and for those of you that missed it, please. You have to check out Beyond the Summit's Twitch, and you have to watch it, because that tournament was sick. In the outro, I will be discussing more about Beyond the Summit and some of the other possible guides you can watch instead of me, if I am just that unlikable to you. So, before we get started in part one, remember, I'm going to show you just some, just some of the Dota don'ts, just some of the trolling that I hope would stop. Um, and then we're going to get right into part one. And then after that, we will be following with the Dodo or the Beyond the Summit tournament, which was excellent. So, all right, guys, let's get this shit rolling. Okay, so I want to have this little bit of a discussion here with you guys in terms of uh, I want you guys to see some game that I played. Now, Silencer is a bit broken, so please just, uh, just bear with it. But anyways, um, so... Here's the thing I wanted to discuss here. Now, a lot of people had a little bit of a difficult time understanding what I meant by controlling the creep equilibrium and then using the advantages of like your hero, right? So I'm a spammer. So what I ended up doing was I was going up against a Shadow Fiend and I was using obviously my abilities to my advantage. So I'm spamming, spamming, spamming. Um, going to get a bottle, but look where I'm at. Look at how, look at how notice how notice how I knew that I had an advantage and he was scared of me. So what I did was I was staying in the high ground. Now look, I'm just pressuring him, constant pressure, constant pressure. Now look what I did here. Look what I do here. When I was talking about controlling the lane and controlling the equilibrium in the lane, look at the creep. I don't want to push. I want to keep the creep at my tower. So what did I do? I knew the Shadow Fiend was not confident enough to trade hits with me. He was a little bit afraid. So I held at the top of the ramp, like I tried to tell Tomas when he was going up against um, that Gondar to um, hold the lane. Now, eventually, right, look what's going to happen. The creep are going to naturally push, but guess where the equilibrium meets? Again, at my high ground. Now, I am not on the high ground because he's so far back and I want to do damage to him. I'm just waiting, biding my time, biding my time. Just last hitting, doing what I got to do here. Um, moving forward, moving forward. Look, boom, 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 boom. Just, again, spamming, hitting him, using... Look how high I am. I'm in his high ground, confident. And now, I'm going to end up going up here. I'm going to end up ganking, but this is really not the point of this. This is just uh, whatever. I also end up dying here because, like, we went, we went after multiple people. We killed two people, but... I overstayed my welcome, but as you can see, look what look what I ended up doing here, right? I moved forward, I got a rune, I took advantage of that rune by heroes that were out of position, and I got a kill and all that other good jazz, whatever. So here's what ends up happening. Um, they end up lane switching because of the control, but look, I'm just still farming, still farming. Look at the mini-map, look at the mini-map. Just farming, farming, farming. I'm understanding that we're in a little bit of a lead here, despite the fact that we're losing, because I dominated mid so thoroughly. They have... Dazzle now middle and again i'm just continuing to go continuing to go just trying to get my farm trying to get my items now look the top two f in farm is basically me and tiny well now it's but look at the shadow fiend he's at 15. 15. i basically doubled his farm and i did it while using high ground and just using my skills to my advantage and stuff now now granted silencer is fucking broken but i mean that's Okay, so in this game, I'm going to continue with the whole I must, how to play against AoE heroes as a single target hero. Now, Nyx, you may think, well, he has the ability to spam, you know, a stun and he can last hit and all that good jazz. But in reality, it's not as effective as it would be against 
you know, like a co-op or a DP or heroes of those nature because you end up using mana burn so so magic right so you mana burn harass and then you're gonna spam um stun as well and it's too much mana it's just not efficient enough now every now and again you see me do it but for the most part i'm going up against a hero that can clear creep how do i keep the equilibrium in the lane and how do i control runes when the definite advantage to do that is on the other side well i do it by applying pressure so i'm trying to use my stun and mana burn combination a little bit um differently by sometimes last hitting sometimes keeping the mana low now i get a kill here i'm not even gonna fucking talk about it but look how much creep i lost i literally lost two creep while getting the rune because i pushed the wave and then not only did i push the wave but i ended up getting a kill or yeah yeah i ended up getting a kill here because i'm effectively pushing when i'm supposed to harassing as well so that i'm keeping her off my back now look so she spams creep she gets one last hit she does some fairly decent harass on me and look what i do here to keep lane on my side right i'm gonna stun i'm gonna try to hit her as well i miss but that's not the point and now look boom now i'm keeping the equilibrium here because i do not want to under any circumstance give a ranged hero a bigger advantage by fighting definitively from her high ground so well what do i do i make the choice here to grab this rune mainly because i understand that i need to continue spamming or i'm going to lose the lane because eventually dp will just be able to last hit and control the lane when um However she wants, the higher um, the uh, Crypt Swarm gets. The higher it gets, the, the easier that becomes for her. So while it, we're relatively low level, I just want to keep the harass up. I want to keep getting last hits. I want to keep getting the farm because I know that my strength comes the moment um, I'm, I hit around level 8 or 9. Once your stun is maxed, then you can basically use Vendetta to just start killing. I mean, you can immediately do it at level 6, but it's just, it's a little bit easier when you have max stun and you have um, an extra point at the Carapace. Uh, as you can see, they knew I was coming and, you know, all that good jazz. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes you do that. I, 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 I try to make another play with another rune. And again, I'm going back into the lane, going back into the lane, going back into the lane trying to last it to the best of my ability i'm trying to keep the creep wave exactly where it is because i want to continue to have my advantage so what i'm trying to do is, is i'm even auto attacking you see i'm auto attacking because i'm trying to just keep the equilibrium um, at least to the middle river All right so now look they're gonna she gets she's gonna get the high ground here so i'm gonna push i pushed early i preemptively pushed so that i can get the next room and then create some sort of equilibrium i come down here we ended up i ended up dying it doesn't matter we won the game and i fucking destroyed this game but that's not the point the point is you you see it's like a topsy derby like the moment i see the equilibriums she's getting an advantage i start pushing now look she has 40 cs i have 32 though she won the cs battle in my opinion as nick's assassin i feel like that's a win because i kept up relatively close and then look i ended up just i mean you know we dominated the game i mean it is what it is but again i'm using nick's assassins natural all right guys now this is my, normally something i wouldn't do i wouldn't cut something in part one but i kind of wanted to uh explain to you what's going to happen now so now that you saw um a little bit more in depth creepy equilibrium and all that good stuff what i wanted to show you guys is a a few games I played with a fan. So this fan watched Dota 101. Um, he watched the first episode of Dota 101. Uh, or he watched the second episode uh, of the mid-episode. And he's been playing middle. And he's been messaging me for a few days now. And he wanted to play one-on-one -on -one with me and him. And I kind of was like, okay, cool. Like, I do it with friends. And I do this a lot either um, like with pros or even some of my good friends. That are in, and some of the up-and-coming players in dota that are that are on teams that are pretty good that are trying to make it to the pro scene like we scrim all the time like i do this shit pff, all day like i mean i would do it all day so i thought it was awesome right like i thought it was cool that this kid was like hey man look um like you know i watched your video i enjoyed your video but can we play one-on-one -on -one? i was kind of like okay uh sure i'm all about that and for those of you that don't know that is the way to get better man Playing against competition that is equal or better to you is so the way to get better. And I was like, all right, cool. So so what we did was we um, rec I, I, I recorded all three games and then we discussed all three games. 
we discussed the replays for all three games being him. So we just spoke about the games and then all that other stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna show those. His name is Pear. He's a fan of Dota 101. Um, I was very excited that uh, you know somebody was challenging me, not really to prove a point to him, but I I mean that is the way to get better. Like that's the way to improve. This is the type of mentality that I want you guys to have. You don't you shouldn't be afraid of playing better competition. You shouldn't be afraid of playing somebody like myself, somebody like. Dendi, somebody like Fear who just won Fistful of Tangos, you should want to be playing against us because you should, you know, that's the level you want to be at. So therefore, the only way to get there, right? The only way to to be the man is to beat the man. And I, like, I loved it. Um, we had some 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 conversations about the game itself afterwards. So some of, so even though the game was over, we probably spent a few minutes talking about some of the stuff that was relative to that game. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. And I hope to do more uh, of these videos with uh, fans and stuff. Um, he was, he was, he kept messaging me and I finally was like, all right, bro, like I'll do it. And then um, I, I decided to record it. And then we went over his, like the replays of the matches and stuff. And it turned out to be really great. So I hope you guys enjoy it. By the way, let me know what you guys think about this. Leave the feedback for this because if it's, if it's something that turns out to be really hot, I will do more of this in the future. All right, so I'm looking at you right now. Yeah, that just, it just sucked because he, uh, like the creep got away from you so early that he literally just went down the normal path. But you had right. the rest of them pretty good. Like that's exactly what you need to do. You know, another tip that I learned that was really helpful. So my whole position is my space bar, right? So what I did was, as I'm running, I spam spacebar, and it stops them for a second completely. Like if you, like if you want, like at, at the end of this, just go back and watch how I creep block, and then you'll see what right. I'm talking about. Like that helps big time. But, but you see how the high ground, like I'm just using high ground here. That's all I'm doing. Right. Just high ground and attack, 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 attack. And the problem with um, Viper is <laughs> he's super squishy. He's just yeah. so squishy early on. He he gets stronger the higher he gets like um his passive his corrosive skin but up to that point he's still super weak yeah and especially with you know your shadow dagger or whatever um you can just harass me really hard <laughs> yeah that's just that's just that's that's the nature of the hero that's the unfortunate part like the advantage like you will start having an advantage the moment you start getting more into corrosive skin Right, and, so you're saying maybe I, I'm building it yeah. wrong, like I shouldn't go so new heavy in the beginning, but I should like... No, I think your skill build is perfect for middle. Like I like I even think going nether toxin at level one was like the smartest thing, because a lot of people don't realize like it helps your last hitting. It's oh, wrong. it's ridiculous. It's like 45 damage extra. Even Bro, it's excellent. One. No, 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 no. You did the, your skill build was, was good. I think the thing you could have did better was instead of getting six tangles, get three, and then rush, um, like... Yeah. Tranquil, or let's say for some reason you want to go bottle or whatever, you could do that. Like you don't need the three, the three right. tangles. Me, I get always one south middle, so I, I get see. four branches and one south because if I'm that low, then I just south all the way up. But I basically just bait a lot. So like, right. like I'll let you hit beat on me, beat on me because I know I know I have a south if I'm getting the right last hits or deny trade back. You know what I mean? And then when I yeah. get the bottle or tranquils or whatever. Then I yeah, start I think playing for it's the. It's interesting. You mentioned the bottle. I actually went for a semi fast bottle. Mm -hmm. And if I had had it just a little bit sooner, I might have survived that first death. Um, yeah, yeah. So just not having that extra tango yep. might actually have made the difference. Absolutely. Like, that's my, my build every game is four branches. I mean, it depends on the hero, of course. Like, if I play Pudge, totally different. But for the most part, it's that. And then, and another big issue I'm seeing is you're not harassing, like, you, you're not hitting me enough right you're like you're playing not to lose you're not playing to win here right and i think that's see like exactly like those last hits that's what you want but again everything happens where high ground when you have high okay. ground and then here you chasing me that was not a good move yeah. um i'm not sure if you saw the fistful of tangos um when you see the episode the intermediate middle like i do commentary on the fistful of tangos matchup between fear and s4 like if you don't know what i'm talking about it's a war no, I, saw, I, I saw that best of three that was yeah. pretty awesome he did the same shit 
when he was co-op uh, against Puck, against Fear, he did the same shit. Like, he got way overzealous. There's no reason for it. Like, honestly, there's no reason to chase me. Um, the strong, the higher level Viper gets, the more damage output you're going to put, and, and, and the better your harass gets. Like, the, yeah, you can start dog walking when you get three levels of um, mm -hmm. whatever the cure is. Absolutely. Um, uh, the poison sting. But yeah. the thing is, like, my advantage was early. Your advantage was later. And that's what I think you needed to, like, play to. You, you needed to play to your strength. So chasing me like that was a big mistake. And then here, yeah. you took too much damage for no reason. Was a, I remember what happened exactly here, which was, uh-oh. And then I was, like, just, I was paying attention to getting, like, tangoed up. And uh -huh. wasn't paying attention to, like, hitting me further, which was really stupid. Yeah. And I think, you know, the, the mistake that I often make, I notice, mm -hmm. is that once I decide that I'm not going to man fight and I turn around, you know, you're giving up a huge amount of, of yeah. just auto attacks. Harass, yeah. Um, so that's really stupid. Like, I, I wonder what your take is on that. Like, when you're in that situation and you're sort of uh -huh. facing off, right, you're, you're trading hits. Yeah. Uh, like, how do you decide who is the first to blink, as it were? Like, who, who should turn back? Like, when um. do you... That's a tactic, bro, that comes from experience. Like, like, I used to describe it as, like, throughout your maturation process as a player, you'll learn how to man up and when to man up. I have the same issue, bro. I can't even describe to you how many times I got so flustered. Like, it'll be really close, and then I'm like, oh, I mean, I, I got to get away. And then I run away, and then I turn around and I hit him, and then I die with, like, I, I, well, I die, and then he has like 30 life or some shit, and I'm kicking right, so myself. Just one more attack, and you Oh my been. god, bro, I yeah. can't. That comes with time, and that comes with experience. But to be honest, it also comes with um, playing, playing mid more in terms of playing heroes. Like, you have to play as a hero, and you get a feel for how much damage you can take, what you can take, what you can't take. Like, I think the only thing you needed to do was just play for the, like, right? Like, play for the late game. Just play until you got level six. And then once you got a bottle, just every time you saw me in range, poison attack, poison attack, poison right. attack, poison attack, poison attack. Eventually, I'm not going to be able to take it all. I'm going to have to man up on you at some point. And the thing is, what you should have done is if you're going to level po like against a co-op, you got to go corrosive skin. So what you should be at level four is 211 and then start getting corrosive skin. Like once you get the third point into poison attack, start maxing corrosive skin up, and then you get your all and then max corrosive skin because it also gives you magic armor. And it helps you with magic damage. And then start stacking hit points. Because right. if Quap can't kill you with a combo, she's dead. That's just it. If I can't instantly kill you... You can't because, blink out, right? Because you blinked in probably for Scream. So then yep. you're kind of stuck. And Exactly. So like, all you had to do was just stack HP and then just make sure that you can catch me sleeping at some point with a lot of auto attack so you got to use the high ground for that so when you have high ground then you start taking pot shots at me with poison attack uh, i mean again you weren't going to be able to do this so effectively until you got that third level in poison attack but once you did like your next level so you should be 211 then you should get poison attack then you should get ulti right okay yeah that makes so sense we'll do that. So, so so we'll, i'm sorry go ahead Go ahead. No, 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 no. I was just going to say, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the recording here. I kind of fixed it. See, yeah, you're clearly blocked it good. Yeah. Yeah, you did really well here. All the way up until your third tier. Yeah. But still, that's still fine. Like, you, you managed to get it the whole way. That's No, that's perfect. But remember, though, when you put your range creep first, you, you're sort of pushing the lane. See, look, right. all you have to do here is de-aggro everything by getting close to me and hitting me. And instead, you just stood there. Oh, you were fucking with the. You were checking. Oh no, you can't do that that early, bro. That's what you were doing. I like the trick. I do the same thing with my courier too. But no, man, you got to take advantage of the high ground early. That's yeah. what you're trying to do. Also, hit me. Why are you not hitting me? You were doing that a lot. Where you weren't attacking me. Attack. Hit me. Hit me. Yeah. Hit me. I, I think the thing that happens in my head is I'm thinking, fuck, I just missed like three last hits. I need to get some last hits. And then you get sort of tunnel vision on that shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but see, that's the thing, though. That type of passivity, no bueno, because you allowed me to get nothing but fucking last hits and farm, and, yeah. and that's not good. Like, you should be hitting me. Hit, there you go. Hitting me, hitting me, hitting me, hitting me. And even if it's just auto attacks, hit me, 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 hit me. Like, at this point, when you're against melee, right. you can max nether toxin here. In this matchup, you can max the nether toxin, especially if I'm draining your mana. 
Like, just have no mana. Just don't even get a bottle and have no mana and just fucking just beat the shit out of me. Like, continue hitting me. That's what you're not doing is hitting me. Right. And your creeps are not close enough to me to hit me anyway, yep. so there's no... Mm-hmm. And then I see it. Like, you saw the, the sob. You're like, fuck, I don't want to give this guy it. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. No, no, no. This was brilliant. This is exactly what you should be doing. You're just controlling the lane here. I, I think that's why I said, wow, that was pretty nice. That's exactly what you should be doing always and then what you and, and then what you end up doing here is you end up pushing your lane by d or, or by aggroing like i you aggro like you take the hits well see the thing is you go you go tangos see if you had a south you can take right. you can tank the hits from all the creep you know i don't have mana because i'm spamming you so you know right. what ends up happening is your creep get free hits on his creep so the amount of numbers even though it's uneven it evens out because they start doing so much free damage and you're the one taking damage. And then when you get low, boom, you salve up. And then it's almost like you reset the whole thing. And see, having your courier there and not in base was really dumb. Because you should yeah. have had your bottle. I had a master plan, and then I got so focused on the lane that, yep. you know, stupid. Yep, that was no good. And it hit me. Here's where I was thinking, like, why is he not beating my... Hit me, hit me, yeah. hit me, hit me. That's another three hits, at least. <laughs> and... and and see, look, you're doing it. You're maxing the nether toxin, which was excellent. Like, that's that's the way to go right here, just because of the matchup. So you have to start adjusting to matchup. You got to start denying too. You got to start denying your own creep. So in general, when you pop the spike carapace, would you just not attack for that two and a half seconds or whatever? Is is that the general way to respond to that? Yeah, but the thing is, you don't really know when I'm gonna do it. I basically just saved it to like either when gotcha. I felt you were sleeping or I felt I was in danger. Mm -hmm. But sometimes your projectile is already going to be in the air, so you're kind of fucked. You just have to live with that like, against right. Nyx. And then here, I'm just, I'm just harassing. I know I got my bottle. You don't have a bottle. Right. Um, so I Boom. picked that up. There we go. And then I knew, you that, see, I knew that was coming. That here's was a mistake I... you made, too. Keep the courier there, use the whole bottle, and bottle ferry. Gotcha. There's no reason bottle to not ferry. bottle ferry. No, I, I totally agree. I end up bottle ferrying like in another minute or so, but I should yeah. be right. I should have just taken all the three yep. charges in the bottle. And, and here you need to start pushing that creep wave because look what I'm doing. I'm pushing the creep wave to get the runes. This is why I was getting runes. It's because, and you wanted to get the rune now, but you couldn't. And then I go get it because you basically told me where it was. Like yeah. I knew based on that move where the rune was because of I was, you. I was also taking a stupid amount of creep hits. Oh, yeah, I agree. But again, it was all because you wanted to get that rune. If you're going to get the rune, get the rune. If not, then don't worry about it. Like, you could have let me get the rune, but still won the lane. And see, staying here at this point, you should have just gone back to base and TP'd. Like, you have to be much faster with the courier. Like, you're going to have to learn the hotkeys on the courier much faster. Because yeah. I was wondering where the fuck you were. And then, now that I'm seeing it, see, this is too much downtime. There's too much downtime. You have to continue to put pressure. Like, and it, I, I flew my own courier, by the way, so I can bottle ferry if I needed to. I didn't need to, but I did it. You could have, you could have flown courier to get the south to you and not wasted any time. Gotcha. Yeah, it's only like, what, 200 or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yep. And you're not really going to get boots because what you should be doing is farming here and just... Yeah, I ended up getting boots, by the way, but I realized once I had them, that I was like, what am I going to use these for? Yeah. Like... I mean, you can chase me down with Medetta, right? So... Mm-hmm. See, like I said, I, you lost this game. Um, you lost it. I didn't win it. You lost it. Like, I really felt, I mean, I, I mean you did a lot of good things. Yeah, but I'm playing too passively at this absolutely. point. Absolutely. Because I'm like, oh, you know, absolutely. I got hit. Like, absolutely. You kind of, yeah. Like, you have the advantage, and you're giving it up to me. I mean, you're ranged. Yep. You, you got to make me pay for that shit. Like again, to see you like you're doing a good job here. You're doing good. You're doing good. Now you're going to. I was really thinking about chasing your courier down, and then I said, "Fuck it." Yeah, it's only like one hit when it's not upgraded, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And see again, bottle fairy. You should have taken the whole bottle, and you should have bottle ferried. Yeah. There was no reason not to. Yeah. Oh God, that slow courier. It's killing me just watching it now. Yeah. And see, you have boots doing nothing, and then then and, and then I just yeah. caught you sleeping right here. And then the thing is, I have boots. You can check my inventory because of the farm right. I'm getting. Now, you have, what, 20% from the... Yeah. Vendetta. Well, I guess well yeah, I caught up to you, but, but here, I'm just... It's just... Yeah. Speed is why I got you. 
Nice There's not much. Boost. I mean, did I did I actually slow you with poison sting? I don't even think I yeah. did that. Yeah, you did. Okay. But remember, I have fifty percent movement speed where you don't, or I have plus fifty movement speed because of the boots, and you don't. Yeah. So it's a huge difference. I'm at three fifty movement speed. You're at two eighty five. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge difference, man. Yeah. Sixty five movement speed. That's that's a fucking shit ton. See, now you're at 335, but I'm still at 350. I'm, I'm, I'm still faster than you. If you add Vendetta, it's just... A, it's just. And see, here it's all going downhill because I'm at 23 last hits. You're at 14, but for the most part, we were within five pretty much the whole way. Now it's, now it's just getting out of control. And, like, even here, just hit me there. Just hit me so you can break the bottle charge so I don't get the mana. Hit me again. Like, I even see. though the illusions are going to get you, just take those free hits. If, 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 if I'm going to give you the opportunity to hit me, make me pay for it. And here, I was thinking about fucking stunning you. I was like, you know what? I'll just wait. <laughs> oh, you and didn't? Then, it, well, I mean, I did it, but that, that's because you okay. stood there too long. Yeah, that's stupid. Mm-hmm. Like, again, you could just hit me from distance. You don't have to get so close. You don't have to do anything. Like, even if you don't have to... You don't have to poison attack me. See, what you should have been leveling right now is is the Nether Toxin, and you should have gotten your ultimate. Right. And then you yeah, could have even bought time. sentries and just killed me. Like, here, you could have killed me. If you had your ultimate, you would have killed me. No yeah. question. And if you had a sentry on you, you could have just placed it. Yeah, I think what actually happened with the... Um the, the leveling was because I was I think I actually leveled up under the towers so I was thinking about other stuff and I'm mm -hmm. like fuck let's just get poison sting but then I went, just as I pressed it I saw that it was oh level 6 or whatever so that was stupid you're right I would have gotten you there yeah if you also did it at level 7 there's no reason you should have just oh, got your ultimate yeah. you could have just ulted me too you could have yeah. ulted me and killed me and there's nothing I can do about it and see here I catch you oh this is why oh my goodness oh did you see what happened yeah. You went for the rune, and I was wondering where the fuck you were. I was like, where the fuck is this guy? So then I checked. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. And and then I just blocked your escape. And then my stun's coming up in two seconds, so I just get the mana just in case so I can combo you with the... With the but then I was like, oh, I don't need to. He's dead. And that's it. That's all she wrote. So that wasn't actually even dead. That was just in an endless rune, right? No, that was regen. All right, so I picked up oh. the regen. I used the regen. Once I had the enough mana for Vendetta, I ulted. And then I got all the way back up. Oh, I see. And I knew you were going to be middle. I didn't know you were going to go to the top rune. And because I knew you were middle, I just waited for you to show mm -hmm. up. And then I was like, wait, if he's not at the tower. So then I checked the top rune. And, oh, here he comes. And then I just killed you. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of assumed, well, maybe he want to go check the rune. But, you know, so I didn't know where you were. Um, it just so happened you were coming at the you know at the same time I was going but, uh, but like I said you had the advantage here and you did a lot of good things but now you're just playing too passively right. and you have to take advantage of especially the range that you had I mean that's huge yeah, yeah it feels like it's easy to get into the mindset of once you die once now you have to be too yeah. passive you know what I mean like it's like okay you yeah. come out of the gate swinging and then you, you suffer a setback and then you're like okay now I'm worried <laughs> and then yeah. you start playing more and more passively, which is a big mistake because then yeah. you totally concede the lane. Yeah, but see, there's two things. There's two ways to do it. Like a lot of times, some players, when they get their first blood, they they stay with half life or half mana, and you come back with full life. Sometimes that's the best opportunity to get aggressive is when they're still weak from that last battle, and you come back full. That's how you can. Like a lot of times, I get a, like especially when I get first blooded. That's a lot of times how I come back and just rape the lane. Because then I kill them, and then I get the full benefit of, um, like the more than likely a rune, or the full bottle that I got, and then I get to you know recharge everything, um, get full mana, HP, or other times when you die, you just instead of playing, I mean, you, you're gonna play safer naturally, but instead of playing passively, you could play passive aggressively, like. What you should have done after that first death was basically right. say, okay, well, fuck it. Um, flew the courier, kept bottle ferrying, make sure you were fully topped off, and just ulted me and poison attacked me until I basically, like, you want to bleed me out. So you want to poison attack me so much that I'm having to use my bottle just to stay in lane. And you want to do that, um, like, after a rune. So say I, I don't know, I have, like, an, uh, an illusion rune or some shit and I use it. 
right like that's when you want to fucking attack me right when the illusions wear off or like the dd or whatever you mm. want to play super passive until that happens because then you want to do enough damage to me where like i have to use the bottle in order to sustain the lane Absolutely. whereas you're not you're just doing natural damage to me and then remember you are you your viper you're gonna hit harder with the nether toxin you're gonna be able to last hit deny much much more effectively and to be honest the only thing you really need are sentries like one set of sentries um after you fly the courier and just with a bottle and just like boots you should you should be fine like right. i shouldn't be able to kill you with all of that but again you, you just you never took advantage of high ground even though you worked for high ground if you take advantage of high ground and you just make me pay like a lot of times if you have to skip the farm, just just fuck me up. Just hit me. Right. Just make me get out of lane, and then you can make up all the free farm. Yep. So. That makes sense. So you're saying that, yeah. So rather than always thinking of last hits as being high priority than harass, like if I can harass you out of lane, you can't deny me or do anything. So I can just get free farm. That makes yep. sense. Like if you want, um, in the next one, you want to play your Bloodseeker, and then I'll play Viper, and then... Since you can sustain the lane, right? Since you can sustain hits, like you said, I'll just. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Yeah, like I'll just show you like how to get aggressive or how to just stay aggressive, even though the other hero has the ability to um, to obviously like gain health per yep, yep. per attack, so we can neutralize everything I did. Okay, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Um, see, but you're also not even touching your creep till they pass the tier two tower. You didn't really block. Well, it's, I started blocking more. It was yeah. stupid. It's because yeah. I'm always worried about. Missing them right at the start, which is, you know, yeah. Just, no, yeah, we're so. right by the first tower, but you did a good job. S sort of. It's just, I fucking screwed up, but <laughs> still. I mean, it is what it is. And you really need high ground in this matchup because look how much damage I'm taking just to fucking hit you. I was like, oh my goodness, you gotta be fucking shitting me. <laughs> and the thing was, I fucking pushed your lane. Like, I mean, like, because your creeper hitting me, my creeper beating your creep. So look what I did for you. Gave you fucking high ground. And I thought about that. I was like, Jesus Christ, that was stupid. So I was already behind the eight ball. I'm at half life here. Stamp, start spamming silence. And you just fucking kill me. <laughs> Straight up. It's that simple. Yeah. That silence way, is that good. What's up? Stupid thing I did. I, I got my standard sort of melee mm -hmm. build, right? And I realized, uh-oh, no, no money for crit for... Uh, courier so by the time oh, i had enough money to buy stuff wow yeah yeah no bueno but to be fair i did the same thing i bought a fucking <laughs> poor man shield and i was like oh wait i gotta get a courier because to be honest all you need on him is a poor man shield to start like if you're supposed by i'm i'm telling you you don't need any regen on bloodseeker just get a poor man shield and then that's it you're just good and you just you'll sustain yourself and if you need regen like once you get the money you can get a salve and shit just in case but for the most part that's that's what you should start with uh, straight up like and don't get the hatchet or the um the quelling blade so early because what's 33 percent more damage of no damage sure that's basically what my what my what my saying always get a poor man shield on him start spamming silence look at my health just spam silence just just spam it yeah, the, the recent Blowing Blade seems nice, especially on the first few waves, mm -hmm. is that you don't get a lot of heal from the Bloodbath, so if you miss a few last hits, you're kind of... Oh, no, absolutely. But again, um, the more you play middle, the better you get with last hitting. Like, I'm very confident in my last hitting ability, but that's just because of all the, you know, all the reps, basically. Like, you'll eventually get to that point, too, where, like, I mean, again, all my starting builds are four, ten or four branches. <laughs> I don't even get stats on any hero, ever. Unless I'm Pudge, and then I get two, two gauntlets of strength just because it's Pudge, and that's just, just nice. And then look, look what you do here. You make a mistake. You go forward. I remember. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna hit you with a poison attack. I see. Like I was I, actually for a second there. I remember thinking, should I tank it on the ramp? Um, but then you're like, oh, you're on low health, and you can just nuke me. So. Yeah. Nope. You just took unnecessary damage. I basically neutralized the heal. Basically, you you hit you. You hit a creep and he healed you, and then I took it right back to where it was for free. And then notice in high ground, I'm using poison attack because you can't miss it because it's going to hit you. Because it's oh, like, it hits uphill? Yeah, it's an active MG. ability. So I'm sort of cheating. <laughs> sort of. 
Could you say something about the, the difference in kind of melee versus range versus range range um, when it comes to high ground advantage? I mean, there's the obvious stuff like, hey, you can't miss uphill, but you're still kind of more forward than you want to be if you don't have high ground. Yeah, it's just if you're against a melee, right, as a ranged hero, if he's going to hit up, up ground, uh, like uphill, what's going to end up happening is you, you get at least two auto attacks off for every creep that he's trying to attack. And that's hoping that he gets the, the last hit. So it's, it's every time you see them start moving forward, you just hit them. Like, look, every time you came forward within creep wave, I was hitting you. I never not once attacked you. Um, and then when you're range versus range, it's totally different because they have the ability, even though they have a mischance, of still being out of range. So what you start doing is, especially me, I deny. It's not that I put preference over denying, but I make it a case to, like, if I'm pretty comfortable with my CS score, I'm just going to focus on denying for a little bit because I want to get higher levels, especially on spammable heroes. Because, obviously, right, like, the three... Look at the poison attack now just starting to fucking beat the shit out of you. Right. Yeah, it's also really effective to deny uh, against Bloodseeker because not only the CS, but... And then yeah. level, but you. the, the Bloodbath. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really hate it when I'm playing yeah. you know, Shadow Fiend and someone just denies everything in the first wave. You're just totally screwed. Yeah. And then here, like, you tried. I was like, oh, you tried. You were trying to heal there. I was like, wow, that was nice. But the thing was, remember, I had so much creep advantage. Yeah. I should have been way back. Yep. You should have never pushing. been that far forward because my lane was naturally going to push. So once you see that happening, like, you should see that before it happens, right? Just because of the count of the creep and just because of all that stuff. So you should have just already just started getting back and just trying to get max range XP. But instead, when you got, out, when you got caught out, I was like, oh, cherry pick. I could have denied that there, but whatever. But hey, at least since I don't have a courier, now I get my stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. That's that also really hurt you. And again, look, I'm just attack. I'm always attacking you, and see, I kind of fuck up there because I could have had a high ground, but I wanted to hit you. But I was like, eh, it doesn't matter. That's cool. Because again, you're melee, so I would have been much more upset at myself. If it was yeah, here's where I man up, and this is a bad man up. <laughs> I mean, you survived. No, no, this really is what I died, time. Right? I know you survive. Look, you're surviving, but the problem is you don't have creep advantage. Like you can make those man up plays if you have a heavy, heavy, heavy creep advantage, but you didn't. It was almost even. So that's when it's like okay, be, it, because you know how hard the creep are in this game, especially early on. You might be able to, especially with Bloodseeker's ability to fucking counteract like hits with just, just, just gaining health per fucking last hit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can actually like win a battle like that if you have creep advantage right so like like you know when your lane's about to push and like maybe you have two creep left and you have a full wave of creep and stuff you can start manning up there and then eventually your creep may kill those uh my creep and then boom Makes your sense. creep are all attacking my creep and i'm manning up and you're manning up and but you have the advantage so if you're last hitting your creep or um or uh i'm sorry if you're denying your creep or last hitting um my creep or whatever you might be able to go up depending but but basically you just want to use the advantage of the other creep that are there but the biggest issue i think you did was you didn't fucking spam silence if you yeah. spam silence you were doing so much damage and what the fuck are you saving your mana for <laughs> no that was re retarded no 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 i mean it's cool I, I, no i mean i'm just saying but these are the things that you have to think about when right. you're middle right like you have to it's... understand certain certain traits for certain heroes like bloodseeker doesn't need mana because yeah. the only thing he needs it for is his ultimate, but you should have a soul ring on him anyway, and it's a free ultimate whenever, wherever. So you can just spam silence all day, and then once you get a soul ring, you can just spam silence for free when you don't feel like ulting. So. Yeah, so I think what happened with, I mean, you know, sometimes I, like I'm still at the point where I don't have a good read on all the hero's mm -hmm. abilities, yeah. and I'll look at something like the blood rage, and I'll be like, okay, that's primarily a silence. Look, it's a six-second duration silence. That's really mm -hmm. nice against like intelligence heroes or whatever. But I don't really think of it in terms of, oh, this is a great DOT harass, which is what you're saying. Like, yeah. So, I, I, you know, it's like when you look at like one of those multi-purpose spells, uh, sometimes you focus on the wrong thing, which I did in this case. I should yeah. just have been spamming that shit. True, but the thing is, it's fucking sick, bro. Yeah. Sick, no, I sick, totally sick, 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 sick. And especially um, when I fucked up in the beginning, I basically took myself to half life in the first wave. That was... I mean, that's easy pickings right there. That means I have to waste that salve, and maybe have to bring another salve, and I'm just 
further behind. Now, I wasn't going to go bottle against the Bloodseeker. That's stupid. But um, the point was, you didn't know that. But yeah, you would have put me 100. I'm, I'm sorry? No, so, so the bottle, why not uh, go bottle versus uh, Bloodseeker? Because, like I said, you're not really going to be spam Because he's, one, he's melee, so you can just get away with nether toxin her ass. And two, you're really not going to be spamming Bloodseeker like... Because you're going to be spent, like I give you an example, right? So when you fight creep, you're not going to spam poison attack on creep because right. you're going to be hitting him. And then with nether toxin anyway, I'm I'm going to get so many free attacks on you regardless that I need to just you know just outlast hit you and all that stuff. But the most important fact is because by the time you hit level six, I need HP. If I get a bottle, I'm not going to have HP. So Makes what sense. I need to get is you know HP items. So after the poor man shield, I will save enough for treads. I was going to try to get a treads. By level 7 or 8, I would have had treads. Like, for sure. No doubt. I, and I already had a TP on me. I don't know if you noticed. By the time you by the time you came back to lane when I killed you and you were still level 5, mm -hmm. like when I hit you with my ulti, when I just got my ulti, right. I already had a TP on me. I was waiting for the moment you had an ult, and I was going to TP out. Yeah. No, I mean, so, I was actually expecting that. So I wasn't mm -hmm. even banking on the rupture being like a sure yeah. deal or anything of the sort. But that... <laughs> But see, that's also the flaw in your in your thinking, right? Because if you're not expecting Rupture to give you a kill, then what are you not using Silence for? Right? Like, like I said, I was just being. Oh, I, no, I no, thought no, literally sure. the Silence would be useful. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. For so, sure, so. for sure. I'm just I'm just trying to open your mind to like that sort of thinking now, right? Like if you know that that's not going to be like what's going to give you the kill, then you need to have some other way of getting yourself the kill. And the only, doing anything. Yeah, and the exactly, and the only other way to get the kill in that one-on-one -on -one matchup would be maybe to spam silence enough early on, to where you really set me back and you get levels. Because remember, if you get ultimate before I get my ultimate, you're in the driver's seat. Because even if you, e e even if I TP out, eventually I'm gonna be losing. So because remember, if I TP out, that means I have to walk all the way back. So that means you get free experience, wave after wave. You're gonna at least get for every ultimate one free wave of experience if not two mm -hmm. and that over time would have given you the win just by default because of the fact that i'm missing so much creep yeah. and you're right like given the fact that i'm not really mana intensive i could every time it's off cooldown i could force you to tp back basically absolutely right? so that's a good point so i could basically force you to waste like 150 on the scroll plus 30 seconds at least of xp and gold in the lane. so yeah that's a good point yep so that's uh sweet no, that was really useful. So, um, yeah, I mean, I want to, I mean, it was cool, man. Like, it was nice. Like, I saw your message earlier, but I didn't respond to you um, no, no, because I wasn't was here. So, like busy. I said, like, I saw you get on when I got on. I was like, oh, you want to one one now? You can. So, I'm, I mean, it's cool. Um, I'm glad you like Dota 101. I hope you continue to look um, at the videos and keep improving on your game and by all means i'm down to do this like the thing that i tell a lot of people is playing matches like this like these especially for mid players at least like this is really how you improve like i like most of the most of the big like incremental like skill increases that i feel like i've gotten were playing against players that were better than me like this and eventually i go into pub games and just stomp and then, like, now, like, CM games, like, it's crazy. Like, my CM win-to-loss ratio in terms of middle is super high just because so many, I mean, really, I can't tell you how many times I got my ass kicked on one-on-ones by people. And then eventually, um, you know, you know, I started evening out the games, right? You start trading one for one. And then pretty much most of my friends and even some of the pros that I've played with and, and against and stuff, like, I mean, it's still, it's just, it's just the more the more you stick to it and then also if you're gonna um pub make sure you go middle every time mm -hmm. like and that's also gonna get you better because that means you get more reps in so that means you see mid more and more and more and more and more and that's just and that's just huge yeah i'm still at the point where every time i play mid like believe it or not i'm usually winning the lane if you can believe that but i guess oh no no, no i believe it especially at lower brackets like remember it's unfair that you were playing against me but i wasn't doing it to like no, it's totally useful. I, I totally yeah, agree yeah, with your yeah, point yeah. on it's, it's skill difference get better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, you want to keep playing against players that are better than you because that's only the way that you're going to improve. And I guarantee you, when you start going back and playing Viper against other people, you're going to start fucking wrecking, especially in lower brackets, because 
you're gonna be doing what i did to you and it's just because you know i have more experience i've been playing this game longer um that's my main role you know like all that stuff and eventually you're gonna get to the point where you're gonna start doing that to people too and it's just it i, I mean again a lot of it comes down to experience mm -hmm. that is something you really can't account for you have to play like you can't teach experience what they can do is give you like little tips and like helpful helpful things like telling you where i think you went wrong which should have done better and then now you apply those things and then watch you're just gonna start seeing you're just you're gonna start housing kids yeah. um and awesome, then the more dude. you play really the, the better you're gonna get so, so one quick question in that game i didn't really go for room control and it was sort of intentional like i mm -hmm. just i realized that may or may not be worthwhile in any given situation but um i, I know you said in your 101 for mid your beginner uh, tutorial that basically room control is sort of overrated um, yeah. but in this situation I was well in both games I was actually not that far behind in the beginning so I, I wouldn't say like basically until my first death I wasn't losing hard mm -hmm. uh, would it be worthwhile for me to go like push the lane out and go for room control there or is it fine just to stay in lane and try to farm up well the good thing about this is you haven't seen the video yet but when you do I, I like I kind of highlight that I was showing mid experiences of mine where I'm uh, a, a, a hero like you, right? Like a single target hero that can't push waves. And like, how do you beat heroes that are AOE? Not that Viper was AOE, but you know what I'm saying? Like, and the truth is, if you really need the runes, so say you get that bottle, then what you have to start doing is auto attacking more and learning how to auto attack the creep and then auto attack the hero at the same time. But you're always attacking. You're never canceling an animation. Always, 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 always. Because you're trying to have to anticipate their push. But the truth is, the, the reason why, like, me and you didn't even go for runes that game is because there's certain heroes, like, Bloodseeker doesn't fucking need runes to dominate. What Bloodseeker needs is to get to six as fast as possible. And he also needs to be able to um, be mobile around the map and help his team. But right. to be honest, the only thing you need to do is farm. The only thing you need to do is get fast enough items to where you have a really, really, really powerful mid game. Because late game, you're going to be fucking useless. Um... <laughs> So that's really your strength. And then Viper's the same thing. Viper doesn't fucking need runes because there are a lot of times where I don't go bottle on Viper. Most of the time I don't go bottle on Viper because he doesn't really need it. Like because he's just his auto attack is just so good and his attack animation is so good that you can get away with not getting a bottle and just, you know, skipping in, going for treads and all that stuff. Because you you're really not gonna need that all that extra mana. But to be honest, it it soup it really is overrated because most of the time like it's really not going to give you an advantage like i gave an example so regen and in invis don't really give you an advantage it allows you to do certain things but it doesn't give you an advantage right illusions and double damage give you advantages middle but the truth is is it worth it like so why can't i just play passive when you have dd and let you last hit or whatever for that Right, so I lose you like know. one way, but that's it. That's 30 seconds. Exactly. And then it's gone, and then you lose your advantage. All I gotta do is play it safe, and then I go back to beating your ass. But I didn't have to leave to get the rune. I got that full XP. So the XP I got by myself, or the gold I got for free, I basically just got that for free so that you can get the same for free. And then we just even it out, but I got more experience than you did during that trade-off. Mm -hmm. So like, unless you're doing something with the rune, like a hero like Nyx, right, needs room control because I have to spam or I'm gonna get my dick rocked. Period. Right. And yeah, you that, need a lot of mana, right? Like mana burn is pretty costly. Exactly. And that ultimately is the problem there is you have to be able to like differentiate when you should, when you should, like OD. Like I played OD tonight, dominated the storm spirit, didn't even get the rune once. It didn't matter. I had like a hundred CS by like fucking something stupid by like I, I don't know, like thirteen minutes or twelve yeah. minutes. This whole like uh, pop -pop ballistic uh, like you know random twenty five percent mana back is ridiculous. <laughs> oh no no, no. Yeah, yeah you know super good and it's really good against other intelligence heroes and all that stuff. But yep, yep. but like I'm saying, there's certain heroes that don't need it. Like sometimes on Shadow Fiend, I don't even bother getting it. I just worry about last hitting, raising creep waves to get free farm, and then I like I bottle fairy. Well, a lot of it too is because especially on Shadow Fiend, people are gonna gank you, and you have to know that, and you have to constantly your map awareness has to be super key. So sometimes instead of taking the risk and trying to get jumped, gotcha. I just play your super safe. But like they're just, I, I mean, again, it all comes down to just experience and 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 play. But I feel like room control, though it's really good, it's super fucking overrated. Everybody right. puts a super big price tag on it, but to be honest, you could just be smart enough to just say, okay, I can see the 30 seconds of advantage that you're going to have, 
So, so basically, like your decision process is like if you need the mana, it's great. And also, I guess if you can easily push out waves, so you're not really losing farm. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. also like you know, there's even if you don't have a rune ward vision, you can at least try like for the top, and you're not missing any CS whatsoever if you can push out real fast. I guess like Death Prophet or someone like that. Yeah, like Death Prophet. Like any spam, like the rule of thumb here would be any spammable hero, you want to get room control. But heroes or 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 the outlier here is for people that are super passive. So like if you're playing against somebody that's putting no pressure on you, don't even bother. Let them get the fucking runes because they're not gonna do anything. <laughs> like if they're not harassing you in lane, they're they're really waiting for a home run, like a DD or haste or some bullshit. Let them have it. Yeah. Like just. But let them have it, um, and like haste rune is 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 I guess the most flexible. Where, especially on a ranged hero, like you know how I said, like two of them don't help you, but two of them do help you. Well, haste is the one that can help you, but it can only really help you for harassing. Like you yeah, can get into can position away. exactly. Yeah, you can get like I give an example. So like say you're at a like you have a ranged matchup, right? Let's like, say you have like a queen of pain versus like a death prophet right death prophet has a slower animation so if you're the queen of pain and you get a haste rune you can actually move forward attack run away and you may get the trade right one for one but more often than not you're going to be in position faster and get the hit and she's not going to be able to and as long as you know like the range and you can almost estimate like like where you should be to do it like you can go back and forth and just be in and out of that range so she's gonna have to move forward and then you can just move back a little bit and since you're so much faster she's gonna probably run into creep and just you know all this sort of stuff so haste is the one that can and really can it's it, it it just depends on how you use it like if you're a ranged hero you can definitely use it to harass um, to get into position to harass but if you're a melee hero it's fucking useless for you because there's nothing really you're gonna be able to do with it so mm -hmm. makes sense but Thanks, right, that was really super useful. I learned a lot. I have to think about all this and try to apply it. Yeah, man. Um, you're gonna be on, <laughs> you're gonna be in the next Dota 101. I'm glad that you allowed me to use the footage actually because I was yeah I was kind of stumped on like I needed something to fill the time, but I didn't want to put any more of my videos. Like I was like because I don't want to make the you know the episode about me. So mm -hmm. it was really good that this happened because basically this is intermediate level. Um, play so. Yeah, no, I, I, I really dug the. Cool uh, no, I, I really dug you know the first one where you had was a Tomas or like one of your mm -hmm. buddies. Yeah. Like I thought that was super instructive. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, like, you don't see like that's the yeah. really unique part. You know, there's a bunch of guides around now, but I think mm -hmm. that part where you're really sitting with your buddy and you're yeah. kind of giving him that advice that's really unique. I think that's super valuable. Yeah, but thank you, bro. I appreciate it. But uh, yeah. but all right, guys. So we're gonna head on to part two. And it'll be the Beyond the Summit finals between S4 and EG's Fear. Yes, this is the Beyond the Summit one-on-one -on -one Fistful of Tangos finals between No Tide Hunters S4 and EG's Fear. And I wanted to uh, show you guys this for a multitude of reasons, but mainly because they both implement both of the or all of these strategies that I spoke about during the first episode. Um, of mid in the beginner section um, m most of the rules were applied as well as the fact that um, this was just super high level play and even though this is the intermediate section and I'm not saying I'm not being overzealous am I thinking that you know you guys should all be able to play like this right now but of course this is the way you want to get to or this is the skill level in which you want to get to and there's still a lot of things you can learn from watching people that are better than you play the game um, but for those of you that didn't see it, please, you have to, have to, have to watch this uh, this little tournament that Beyond the Summit um, did, the uh, the one-on-one -on -one tournament. But anyway, so as you can see, they're both trying to creep block because obviously in a one-on-one -on -one setting, high ground is of the most important measure early on in a lane. As you can see, uh, S4 made a little bit of a mistake. I'm going to show you here. All right, so look. So the mistake that he made was... He got um he allowed one of the creep to wrap around the tower and when it wraps around the tower, um, as you can see, it's gonna get too long and it's gonna be a little bit too difficult. Now the good thing that he did was obviously he sent one creep way ahead in front, which means all four creep are gonna be focused on that creep instead of all of them being equal and attacking like all the melee 
one melee attacks one melee but now this becomes a last hitting war between the two where queen of pain has the advantage because her base damage is higher and i do like her attack animation a little bit better now as you can see s4 already showed his hand he showed that he was getting super aggressive you know he he started screaming to uh kill creep just so he can push out the early bottle um now as you can see eg fear his his lane's gonna push now because of the fact that he has two range creep. He ha he hasn't denied the range creep. That's a nice uh, use of phase shift right there to block it. But, but but you can see these guys are just this is a standard mid. They're going back and forth, back and forth, trading hits. Illusory orb goes out, does some damage. Um. So now S4 is in the safety of his tower. Now he does. He still has enough regen. He's gonna last hit pretty comfortably here. Um. Just pretty standard early stuff between these two heroes i think this is the most balanced matchup of of most mid heroes that i've seen in this tournament this is by far in my opinion the most balanced matchup both of the, their mobility is negated by one another in different ways however queen of pain's natural burst damage against puck's ability to evade damage now look this this play right here is really good this play right here that s4 just made in my opinion cost him the game and what i mean by that is he showed the aggression. He showed how aggressive he was going to take it the entire time. So if Fear was asleep, Fear was caught napping earlier. If you remember, he used uh, S4 used Shadow Strike and it hit him. And, he, you know, he didn't really do anything. However, when S4 made this jump, you remember when he he, uh, he goes from from there and then he blinks on him and then he does his, his uh, or her scream, that is a huge play because it, it's almost like when you're mid and somebody makes an aggressive move like that, you're like, oh shit, if I keep fucking around, he's going to kill me. That play should have been kept in his arsenal for when Queen of Pain has the advantage. Because like I was saying earlier, Queen of Pain's advantage is in her burst damage. However, Puck has the ability to dodge one of the skills that, that are going to come at him if he times it appropriately. And why that's important to know is, well... If now in his mind he already has it set, okay, this can happen. His 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 finger is gonna be on phase shift. It's gonna be on the trigger. Not that it wouldn't have been normally, but he already got he was already caught napping and he got hit. And then it happened again, but this time it was a blink initiation. Now that is huge because that play at level two, in my opinion, set up fear. His strategy, it's set up the mind games that are going on in, 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 his, uh, in his head. He's like, holy shit, if I keep, if I keep playing around, she's going to kill me. She's going to kill me. Now, does anyone see an issue here? I'll tell you what the issue is. Stats and not Shadow Strike. Shadow Strike is used as an ability that basically forces Puck to blow his face shift. Now, you guys may be thinking, well... Quap doesn't have the mana. You see this play that he made here when he came in and then he screamed and then um, Fear used the illusory orb. I mean, uh, used the face shift to negate the damage. Well, what happens is Shadow Strike is used in that place in place of that move so that you can basically shift Q the blink with the Shadow Strike and it's almost simultaneous. Most players, once they hear the blink sound and see the animation, will automatically instinctually face shift. And that is S4's problem, and you're going to see how it leads to his demise. Because not only did he show his hand earlier by him getting aggressive um, and using Scream early, but the biggest problem with it was not only that, he didn't have... He is only going to have two abilities at one point. He's going to only have his ultimate, and he's only going to have his Scream. Without the Shadow Strike dodging or uh, forcing a dodge on Phase Shift, S4 is basically going to have to have perfect timing and impeccable timing in order to actually do anything. And, and, and you're going to see how it all comes to a head here. But now look, once the bottle is is uh, obtained by fear, look what he ends up doing. He ends up spamming, he ends up pushing because of, of what we learned in the first episode. Right now, look, now rune control. He pushed the wave as soon as he got the bottle because he wanted to pick up the rune at, min at minimal cost to him, which is he's only going to, I think, lose one creep. Now... As you also re should remember from the first episode, DD runes and illusion runes are a huge advantage in a one-on-one -on -one setting. And you're going to see how not only does it increase um, fears, uh, 
last hitting, but also his denials go way up. Now, he makes a little mistake here, but I mean, it is what it is. But not having Shadow Strike right now for S4 is huge because he can't dodge or he can't force Puck to use his phase shift and dodge a Shadow Strike so then he can open up. Now, look at this right here. Now, you see how phase shift was implemented to dodge this attack. Now, I'm going to rewind this back here because I want you guys to see something. Um, let me let me go back. I th no, gotta go back a little bit further. Okay, so right here now, look. Now I'm gonna show you guys something. Now Quap has the advantage here because look, the distance between the scream here to the hero that Fear is using is far enough to where he can strike outside of Fear's silence range. So he, S4 is far enough away that silence isn't going to be a factor here. Yet he's close enough that he can hit fear at this range. So fear decides, okay, well, I'm obviously going to block the damage. I don't want to take the damage. I don't want to be harassed here. Now, this again goes back to what I was saying with S4 not getting shadow strike. If he shadow strike from a distance and... um face shifted or and then fear face shifted right away well he can walk forward up to this zone this little zoning area right this is this is the uh the zone uh the danger zone right he can walk into the danger zone and still actually hit him upon fear coming back right so you see look this is the danger zone this whole area here's the danger zone so he could actually have baited the face shift and then walked to the same spot and then boom, attacked him the moment fear came out of the phase shift and it would have done damage. This is what Shadow Strike does. It is more mana intensive and I completely understand why S4 thought to, to do this. Also, he was misclicking um, his Shadow Strike earlier in the tournament and he ended up like hitting creep and stuff with it. Now, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to get into that stuff. I don't know if he was just too caught up in the moment or fear was already in his head but the thing i can tell you is you need you need shadow strike here to start baiting out phase shift because if you do not have it then puck has the advantage period because you cannot blink in without getting silenced and then getting attacked at the same time you still can dodge one of the two abilities if you are paying attention right the ultimate from queen of pain the scream of pain or or obviously her third ability, which is a scream. Um, or the sonar scream or the scream. So as you see, look what ends up happening. So again, even though S4 is last hitting pretty well, he clearly has an advantage. In my opinion, it is better early on within the first four levels. Well, no, it's not better. Last hits and denies to me are worth pretty much the same early, early on. Why? Because on certain heroes... You want the level advantage, like to do the damage, right? To do the base damage, um, to do more damage because you have your skills are higher level, and yet on some heroes it's not. Well, in this case, Puck can actually do damage from distance, so Puck actually can benefit from getting more denies, which you can see, because even though she's she's lower level, she can damage you from far away. Whereas Queen of Pain really needs to be within relative range to do damage yet she has a high nuking potential so she needs um she obviously needs her levels as well the difference being that she can't really do damage from a distance like puck can so puck can rush the bottle and then spam right away whereas queen of pain in my opinion with the with the benefit of the extra damage and the benefit of having um the ability to not only last in and deny better, but with higher levels comes more burst damage. Whereas though it the same rule kind of applies to Puck, Puck can just sit back once she gets the bottle and just start focusing on um, denying. Whereas I feel like Queen of Pain really needs to focus early on equally with last hitting and denying, but yet she has to favor getting the bottle first because she needs to be able to spam a lot more. Puck has the advantages of just sitting back and I don't want to say relaxing or coaxing, but definitely the the way Fear is, is playing this by focusing on denies, trying to keep Quap's level low is really smart because he knows that's Quap's advantage. Once Quap gets a a few levels above him, he's screwed. Queen of Pain, the hot... 
as the levels increase, Queen of Pain's lead and, and ability to kill is, becomes more evident. She just gets more, more naturally stronger than Puck because Puck sort of doesn't really do so much burst damage or damage. Puck's just good with positional play and like controlling like the battlefield and the silence and has great escape mechanisms and all this stuff. But anyways, so as we continue, you can see the lane equilibrium for both sides is pretty much right down the river because they're both applying the same sort of methods and tactics that you guys learned in the first episode. However, though, I feel like Fear has had high ground way longer because he's done a little bit of a better job of controlling creep and pushing at the right times, and he's paying attention to Quap's nature. Like, if you notice, when Queen of Pain screams the lane sometimes, Fear immediately preemptively, or um, just immediately illusory orbs to preemptively prevent the lane from pushing into his tower and i think that's huge because he's 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 implementing the lane control i think in a much more efficient way he's farming the creep and at the same time keeping equilibrium where s4 is farming the creep but he's trying to push so that he can control runes yet fierce timing is so impeccable that no matter what s4 is doing he's actually able to get all the runes he's well i mean with the exception obviously of the last one but you'll see also, as a matter of fact, that the regen room is going to come into big play because of a little bit of a misstep by S4. And you're going to see that actually happening very shortly. Um, so, I mean, again, look at the equilibrium of the lane. Look at, look at the numbers. I mean, it's fairly, it's fairly close. Uh, Quap still has a lead, but naturally, Quap is going to have a last hitting advantage. And remember that a point went into stats. Um, S4 went into stats. Now, look. Look at uh, Fierce positioning here. Look where he is. He's setting up something because you can see him diving forward. Once, once you see Puck coming forward, you know something's awry because Puck normally doesn't want to come forward. Puck is going to sit back until, boom, it's a moment of strike. And you're going to see this happen right here. Um, not to mention, look at, the, look at the creep advantages that he has. He understands if he pops an illusory orb here, look what's going to happen. He's going to kill one of the creep. The, the remaining three creep that he has is going to uh, kill within one auto attack of each attack um kill that second melee creep the range creep is going to take damage and look where s4's pathing is s4 is directly behind and now boom now he's going to miss here but that's fine the point is he this is all fear's method of pushing and controlling the lane now look what happens here fear's ready now for s4 did you see that s4 made this play at level two earlier and fear wasn't ready for it and fear got hit so well, what did I tell you earlier? The mind games, right? S4 embedded in Fear's head already. This guy's gonna get tricky and he's gonna get aggressive on me. And if I don't, and, and if I slack, I'm gonna lose. If I don't pay attention, he's gonna kill me. The moment S4 moves forward, boom, silence. Well, phase shift. Then as soon as he comes out of it, silence. And now look what happens here. Now S4 makes a big mistake with the regen. Did any of you catch that? Pops the regen and then eats an attack. So ruins the region. Look at S4's health. He's 175 HP in. Look at Fear's health. Fear is like about 40% HP. S4 is barely at 20% HP. Now he's with with the bottle charge. Now he's climbing back a little bit. But but look at the mistake here. There is no reason to fight here, right? There's no reason to fight here. There's 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 no advantage gained here. I mean yeah. I, I mean I guess you can kill him, but. You can also wait a little bit and guarantee the kill later. Just get a point into Shadow Strike. Just wait until you get another level, get into point, get a point into Shadow Strike, and then start baiting it out with the ultimate. Once he comes out, if you stay within that danger zone, remember the danger zone we talked about? You're going to be safe. You're going to be able to ult and scream, and then look what happens. Silence again. Fear, like a grown man, just says, mm, I got you. Come here. Come here, little piggy. Come here, little piggy. I got you. Oh, boy. Mmm. Eat it. I'm not going to rewind that because that is really embarrassing. But fear uses advantages, right? Which is the blocking of, of the abilities, the free block of the abilities of no mana cost to him and Queen of Pain's overzealousness, in my opinion. S4 got a little bit too excited and, and, and I believe it clouded his judgment. There's no reason at 175 life using a bottle charge from a full bottle that you think you should go in 
on a hero. I understand that the mana cost was low, but you got to understand face shift doesn't cost mana. And that, I think, is the big play. So then he blinks in, eats a silence to, from the... Um, and then with the bottle charge, uh, a fear as he... Well, as soon as he silences, he pops the bottle charge, and then he uses an illusory orb, and then he darts towards the ancient camp, and then basically baits him uphill, and then, I mean, it's just a mess. Now, S4 was a good sport. You know, he took the loss like a man. He, uh, he lost the, the game following this as well to Fear Shadow Fiend, who he's notorious for. It was an excellent matchup, but it's something that I definitely wanted you guys to see because S4 had the advantages. We spoke about this. When you have an advantage, play to your advantage. He played to all of his disadvantages. And Fear, as the grizzled veteran, basically just baited him into what ended up being a win by making the aggressive move initially. Um, and then as soon as the creep start hitting the uh, S4's tower, S4 blinks in and then he fears ready, right? He saw the move earlier. He um, S4 showed his hand earlier. Fear was like, mm, I remember this play. It's already embedded into, into his psyche because he was afraid of it. Because if, if S4 made that move instead of at level two, but he made it at that time, he may have gotten a kill here because he may have, fear may not have been ready, but instead he showed his hand. So instead of adjusting the strategy, S4 already was, already had his plan imp implemented and never adjusted it. So fear just waited until he got overzealous. S4 got overzealous, ate him. Hit him up with a silence, you hit him with the, uh, the illusory orb, and use it as an escape mechanism. And then, unfortunately, S4, I, I think he was seeing angels in the outfield, and he's like, oh, man, I got this, I got this, I got this. Pops the regen, but also eats an attack um, by a creep. And then just, it's, I mean, it was, it's unfortunate, and these things happen, but instead of backing up and resetting, and look, in 16 seconds, there's going to be another rune. Instead of waiting until you have Shadow Strike and then full mana. See, with Quap, you have to wait. You have to wait for that one strike. Quap is like a one-hitter quitter. Like, you have to wait to save enough mana for that one combo against that puck. You have to use the, um, the Shadow Strike to bait the phase shift, and then boom. All right, guys. Well, now I'm going to get into a little bit of a discussion with... Uh, beyond the summit that I want to show you guys. So we're going to quickly switch to that and uh, I'll see you guys then. Okay, so I kind of wanted to uh, let you guys know about some stuff in terms of beyond the summit. That's where that game was uh, from, by the way, if you guys um, missed it. Their goal was to reach $25,000 to open up a studio, LD... Um, and gods are behind the project and they already are at 29,000 in basically two days They reached their goal in one day. So shout outs to them. Obviously, I've already put in an anonymous donation Which you guys know so if you guys are available and have the money Obviously if you don't you can still become um, Supporters of them without having to include any sort of money um, Just being a fan of them is definitely good enough. I'm sure they both will be more than satisfied with just that but if you have the available funds and you really enjoyed their material and ld's casting and god's casting or god's being on um like the analytical side of like um if, you know events where he's at like the desk with uh james and whomever so um by all means please uh support these guys they do a lot for the community i also wanted to shout out dota insight it's actually something that some some people were uh referred to me to a while ago and it's it's really good i actually really like it i um am very uh, enthusiastic about the fact that um now there are more content um listenable content not just visual content also i wanted to shout out some of these guides are really 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 good on steam the hold on one second i'm a douche how this show fucked up all right so Purges, welcome to Dota. You suck a lot of people. He has this whole laundry list of uh, thingamajiggies. Uh, it's, I mean, look at the look, look at the rating. This is ridiculous. You know, he has a list of you know heroes and you know all this stuff from mechanics to items and all that other shit. 
Um, there's also one on the Dota Academy. Yeah, the, the Dota 2 Academy is pretty good. Uh, it's, a, it's a guy named Jam Sponge. I haven't watched any of these. Uh, Cyborg Matt can definitely teach you guys how to use this creation tutorial. He has these guides on his website. Actually, let me let me shout out some some of Cyborg Matt. For some of you that don't know who the hell Cyborg Matt is, I don't know what where the hell you've been, but um cyborg matt is this guy he comes up with like weekly um updates and stuff and this is what i was talking about so he has models for like source filmmaker and stuff so you can definitely uh we'll learn about that shit but yeah i definitely wanted to shout out some of the people that i feel are in my opinion the the bright side of our of our little esport here and i definitely just wanted to give these boys a shout out also i want to thank them for allowing us to use the footage um and uh i believe that is all so what we'll do from here is i'm going to speak to you guys a little bit about what's going to go on in the future so the next episode is going to be the five it is going to be basically zoning which you'll see a replay from the international two long dd um is supporting burning burning obviously you guys know is one of my top three favorite players um slightly behind. he's number two slightly behind light of heaven light of heaven is that dude but burning my man burning a lot of people like to hate on burning they think he's like garbage or he's not really as good as people think i don't even fucking bother with that shit for those of you that really want to know who burning is just check any of the prelims or any of the matches at the international too he by far did the most with the least and that is not to be disrespectful to super or rltk or long dd but let's just be fucking serious <laughs> burning is in my opinion one of the top three players in the world and that's going to be argued. People are going to say Siler is better, but uh, it's the same shit with like the Jordan LeBron thing. Like LeBron has notoriously done it with less for X amount of years when he was in Cleveland. I'm not even going to get into fucking that argument because everybody seems to have their own opinion on it. My opinion is um, I definitely like to give credit to the people that I know go above and beyond, um, not, not only for their teammates, but um, just for events i mean 25k in 25 minutes for those of you that haven't seen that match is just unbelievable i'm not even gonna get into it it's just fucking ridiculous so on that topic um i'm gonna teach you guys how to uh, zone go up against a tri-lane um defensively or offensively um also obviously um you're gonna be watching um excerpts of a pro zone and all that stuff so you guys can apply that in your game and finally the carry episode which is the one following that episode will be coached by wagamama i'm gonna host some like i don't know where exactly i'm not sure yet and i kind of almost don't want to say this too early but for now we'll leave it as cyborg's matt blog uh, his blog one of his lucky subscribers on youtube i believe or his his website or wherever he decides to do it is going to get the wagamama carry episode um so i will leave more information on it during the next episode but i wanted people to get excited about it now so that in the future um they know it's coming so they're anticipating it and make sure to look up um stuff at absolute legends uh tv's youtube um make sure to check out cyborg maps blog every every week because an announcement will be made but I, th I believe one of his subscribers is going to get that episode so one of you lucky guys is going to be coached by wagamama as was mike uh what i don't remember his his game name um was coached by mania for going to absolute legends uh, their webs uh, our website and our forums and stuff so now it's going to be given to somebody else and i believe that is all for the slate for dota 101 we have a cool little thing coming out too in the future which is going to be sort of like a, a source for heroes like a quick you know hero guide thing where you can click on the hero and it's interactive and something happens and then you get to see like you know strengths weaknesses lane composition and all that stuff, or like preferred lane and stuff like that so we're going to do that we're already in the works of it it's 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 coming along quite well so all right guys uh that is it and i look forward to the next episode see you guys then